Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening from wherever you might be watching us. Here I am back to launch the start of the second day of the International Aesthetic Masters 2017. We had a great first day and now we are ready for another intensive sharing of knowledge. We start today with a friend from Peru and a highly qualified dental photographer, Dr. Carlos Ayala. Dr. Ayala got his dental degree from the Faculty of Dentistry of the University of San Martin de Porres in Peru. He then followed his studies and got his specialization in his master in orthodontics, respectively in 2005 and 2012 at the Peruvian University Cayetano Heredia. Dr. Ayala won in 2003 the Alado Award from the Latin American Orthodontic Association and then got into dental photography. He is the creator of the Macro to Micro Photo course for comprehensive management of optics and lightning in dental macro photography since 2013. He is also the author of the workbook published in 2016 under Contessance edition. Carlos will be presenting a large variety of tips and tricks about photography for the clinic dedicated to dental aesthetics, equipment, settings and handling. Let's watch and get the most out of his presentation. See you in a couple of hours. Hi, my name is Carlos Ayala and this is my lecture for the International Aesthetic Masters Congress, online Congress. And this is about uh, photography, dental photography. We as a dentist uh, are a kind of uh, macro photographers. Uh, we record the face in macro and micro mode and the mount lips uh, and natural teeth and also uh, small uh, elements like ceramics works so we are definitely macro photographers so all dentistry is about the details and in my work i try to show these details through photography and now it's about aesthetics, okay, but uh, what is aesthetics? Aesthetics is, is the study about the beauty, okay? So when, when we speak about aesthetics, we speak about the natural beauty. And then, if we know a natural beauty, we can do a cosmetic dentistry. And that's, that is the, the reason about my work. Uh, in my work I try to capture the nature, the beautiful of the nature, for uh, emulate, for emulate in, about dental morphology, about textures, about colors, about translucency. And that's why I start my work on photography and continue until now, develop uh, new ways to communicate through photography. But uh, for this goal, we need to know about normal photography. So, this lecture is about uh, how to improve our photography and our way about uh, learn from nature and communicate and motivate because uh, I'm sure about uh, many of you is involved in uh, educational project projects 
So many of you are teacher and through photography we can communicate better than with text or words or whatever. So this is a really like, this is my, my, my goal in my, in my work. It's about macro and mic micro photography for explore, learn and motivate. So uh, I started my work uh, four years ago and I start also uh, to travel around the world, to many cities, a lot of cities and share this experience with a lot of uh, colleagues, uh, dental technicians, uh, uh, also dentists around the world in a lot of cities and this is a very very nice experience and I really like to share the all this experience because uh, I I know that uh, photography is very very important in our career but if we use dental photography as a main uh, tool for communication uh, I'm sure that our career is improved every day, every time. So uh, the last year and now is uh, only one year ago uh, I present this book with Kittesense uh, International Publishing and I put all my experience about dental uh, photography, about macro photography applied to our field. So if you like dental photography, I recommend search my book. It's a very nice book without both words and also for learn, learning uh, only for only with photography with the match. So for understand dental photography or dental macro photography, we need to understand uh, some rules about normal photography. This is a SLR camera, digital camera. In my experience, I test a lot of camera bodies, a lot. Uh, mirrorless, SLR, compact cameras. And um, I'm sure about SLR digital cameras are the best and the most uh, versatile uh, devices for us, for our field. Uh, we need to work always in manual mode, okay? This is a Canon camera, this is a Nikon camera, and we need to work always in manual mode, the end mode. So, we need to know something about macro photography, but apply it to dentistry. This is the triangle, call it the exposure triangle, okay? And we have only three variables. First, the ISO. The ISO is the sensitivity of the digital sensor. Then we have the shutter speed. And finally, we got the aperture or the control of diaphragm. So we need to understand these three elements. Okay, first we have the ISO. ISO, some cameras have a direct access, direct button access. So you can change very easily. Some, uh, for example, Nikon cameras, the, the basic ones, doesn't have a direct button. So you need to enter to the menu to modify. Okay, but this is not a problem, but we need to understand this. This is the ISO 100, okay? When we shoot a, a 100 of ISO, we obtain the best quality uh, in our pictures. What happens if we shoot a higher ISO like this? This is a 10,000 ISO. So when you start to up the ISO, you obtain uh, a problem, call it uh, 
digital noise. You see these pixels, this is a pixel uh, with colors uh, red, uh, green and yellow. So uh, I recommend to, for digital uh, dental photography to shoot between 100 and 400 to prevent the digital noise. Okay. So, if my election is always shoot at 100 of ISO, always 100 of ISO, but with 100 I need a very powerful flashes. Okay, that's why we need to we need a range between 1,000 and 400. Okay, so the first rule about ISO is solve. Okay, so now we start to talk about the shutter speed. Okay, uh, look, in dentistry we always use a flashes, always. We don't use natural light or continuous light like, uh, like normal photographers. So always use a flashes and we can choose, uh, we can use uh, powerful flashes like these, the big ones, or uh, less powerful flashes like this small Nikon SB200. So if we work with uh, powerful flashes like 100, uh, like the, 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 uh, the big ones, we can use a uh, basic uh, ISO like 100 ISO and if you have a less powerful flash like the small Nikon you can choose the ISO 400 because the ISO is only for compensate the powerful of your flash okay so this is a point very very easy so if, if I have powerful flashes I always use 100 ISO. If I have a less power flash, I go in to 400 ISO. Okay, so let's talk about the shutter speed. Okay, uh, because we always use a flash, we need to understand this concept. This concept is called the flash synchro speed or flash sync speed. And this is about for synchronized a flash because when you shoot a camera with a flash you have two times. One time is in your camera body and the other time is in your flash. It's about the duration of the flash. Okay? So you need a time that is uh, totally uh, compatible with your time or the time of the duration of your flash. So this is the time and this time is like a, a, like a basis, okay? This is the 1 to 128 seconds. This is the time for flash sync speed. So if I need a flash or if I use a flash, I always use this, this uh, speed. So always in 1 to 128 seconds. Because this time uh, is uh, totally uh, compatible with the longest duration of a different type of flashes. For example, uh, studio flashes. If you use studio flashes, studio flashes have a very, very long time of duration. If you compare with speed light, like a ring flashes or a normal speed light. So I always use this speed in my camera. You can change the speed in your, uh, the shutter speed in your camera. In Nikon cameras, with this selector in the thumb, and in Canon cameras in this selector. So 
both models, a lot uh, different models have a direct uh, access to change the speed, but you don't need to, to change because uh, always use a flash, so we need to set in 1 to 125. So this is a, a, our second point and always set the speed in 100 to 25 seconds. Okay? And we, we need to, to talk about the diaphragm. The diaphragm uh, is in your lens and this is about the control of deep of field. Okay? So this is not about the light. Because in photography, light is time, always. Okay? More time in your flash, more light. More time in your camera or more shutter speed is more light also. So, this is about the control of deep of field. Okay? This is a regular macro lens, a 100 macro lens. And... The diaphragm open in 1.8 and close on 32. Okay? So this is the range of a lot of different uh, macro lenses. In some Nikon cameras, you have a direct access to change the diaphragm. In this, uh, this is a Nikon camera and you can change in the finger the finger uh, button in front of the of the shutter button this is a Canon camera this is a basic model so if you need to change the speed you need to push this button the AB button and scroll this selector to change the speed sorry it's not the speed it's about the, the, the diaphragm Okay, so in, in Canon cameras, some Canon cameras, and also some Nikon cameras, the basic models, you need to uh, push two buttons to change the diaphragm. And this is that uh, this is what happens when you shoot with a macro lens, with 100 macro lens. If you set your diaphragm in fine point six you only obtain one millimeter of deep of field okay this is that happens when your macro lens is in one to one so one to one is the closest focus of your lens you only obtain one millimeter of deep of field you see this is the only this is only the small area in focus okay this is an optical effect. When you set the, your diaphragm in F8, you only have 2 millimeters of deep of field. Okay? When you set in 11 F, you obtain 3 millimeters. In 22, obtain 5 millimeters only. So this is a kind of problem because we don't shoot uh, flat elements we shoot uh, curve elements with volume so we need uh, a higher uh, deep of field and this is that happen when you shoot at f 32 you obtain only six millimeters of deep of field okay so in macro photography in dental macro photography this is a common, a very common uh, setting in your camera. The ISO 100 because we need to obtain the best image without uh, data noise. The shutter speed is in 1 to 125 because we always use a flash. The F we set always in 32 because we need the, the longest uh, deep of field and in some Canon cameras uh, it's a quite different uh, between Nikon cameras because some kind uh, of models 
uh, like like a, a 5D, for example, or 7D, uh, have less sensi sensi sensitivity of uh, of the light. So we need to compensate with a higher ISO. For example, in this case, a 400 ISO. And we have put models. In the left, the Nikon, and in the right, the, the Canon. The, sh the same shutter speed, the same F, but different ISO. Because we need to compensate the less sensitivity of, the, of your sensor uh, with a 400 ISO. So this is, a, this is the, the setting that always I use in macro dental photography. Always. I never change this uh, setting. Okay, for example, uh, in this picture, we have a f32 in a 100 micro lens. The shutter speed is for sync a flash. So this is a 1 to 125. And the ISO is 100 because my flash is a powerful, powerful flash. Okay, but I only obtain a 6 millimeter of deep of field. If you see carefully, uh, I have only a line with a 6 mm of deep of field, not anymore. In this intraarray intra picture, the same setting, okay? F32, the shutter speed 125 and ISO 100. This picture is made with a 100 lens, 100 millimeters macro lens, and two light with a, with a twin setup. So this is another picture, the same settings. Okay, so I don't I don't need to change my setting. The most important thing in photography is about the light. So I need to adapt my light, the duration and the position of the light for obtaining a different effects in dental macrophotography, but always use the same setting. Okay, what about uh, portrait photography? So in portrait, I don't need a closer diaphragm. I need because uh, this is not a macrophotography, okay, because a portrait we shoot with a working distance between 3 meters, uh, 6 meters, depends of your lens and also you, the, the size of your sensor. So with a f8, I can obtain a 1 centimeter of deep of field at 3 meters with a 100 macro lens, like this picture. So it's okay if I use always in a portrait uh, F11, for example, okay. In difference, uh, with a micro photography, that I always use a F32. As you see, the shutter speed is the same because for portrait and also for micro photography, I always use a flash. So I need to fla to speed for seeing a flash. And maybe for portrait, this is a very nice to shoot at uh, 200 ISO and for macro the best 100 ISO so these settings I always use these settings and I never change okay I never change these, these settings the only uh, element that I change is the power the power or the duration of my flashes and the position of the flash and the type of diffusers. So this is the the, the best uh, the best way for obtain the best uh, macro photography. So because the light is the most important uh, element in photography, we need to talk about the light. Okay. So. We need to start to understand the duration of the light in a speed light because in dentistry we always use speed light or flashes. Always, always. 
we don't shoot with a natural light or continuous light. This is a speed light flashes. And if you see in the, in the left uh, side, uh, you have a setting in manual, manual mode. I always use in manual mode the flashes. So this is the one to one. To one. What it means, one to one, one to one is the full duration of my flash. Okay? And in the right uh, side, you see 1 to 128. This is the minimum, the minimum power or the shorter duration of my flash. What it means? Look, this is a scale, okay? The 1 to 1 is the full duration. Then you have 1 to 2, 1 to 4, 1 to 8, 1 to 16, 1 to 32, 1 to 64, and then 1 to 128. This is the shorter duration. Look what happens. In 1 to 1, my flash spread all the power, all the duration. So this is the, the most power setting of my flash. This is the 1 to 2, the half duration. This is all about time. Okay? This is 1 to 4, 1 to 8. 1 to 16, 1 to 32, 1 to 64, 1 to 128. So 128 is the shorter duration of my flash. So this is the, the minimal, minimal uh, power of my flash also. Okay, so we need to talk about the source of light okay this is a speed light flashes and i really like to work with this this speed light flashes and i explain for for, uh, for what uh, these flashes are totally wired wirelessly okay uh, these are powerful flashes so i can shoot always in 100 of ISO and uh, if you review the market uh, you have these options for Nikon users you have uh, two very popular models the 910 and the 700 the problem is uh, these flashes are quite expensive and also the uh, the trigger uh, method is about uh, infrared so you need a commander or you need a camera body that have a infrared transmitter so i don't like infrared because infrared need to be aligned uh, like a, a control a remote control of the television if you don't align this uh, signal you can shoot, you can trigger the flash. So I don't like infrared, uh, this method. Eh? For Canon users, you have the uh, 600 and 430. And this is very popular between Canon users. But also it's a quite expensive uh, flash. And also you can trigger uh, by infrared. So I, I don't like these options. I have the, these Nikon flashes, but uh, it's very nice for portrait uh, in uh, outdoors when you can mix the, the, the continuous light of the sun and, and the, the flashes also. We can, you, you can mix the sun with, uh, and also flashes. You can use this flash uh, for portraits. But it's not, it's, an, it's not a very nice flashes for uh, our purpose or our field in dentistry. And I really like this type of uh, speed light. This is the Jono 560. Uh, this flash, the methods of triggering these flashes is about radio. So if you have a radio, uh, 
you can trigger 100% uh, this flash. Uh, also, this flash is very, very cheap, very cheap, and the quality is, is a very, very nice. Also, these flashes have an internal radio receiver, so with these triggers, you can shoot wise, totally wisely. So, this is a very, very nice option for obtaining a very power uh, source of light and also very versatile in dentistry and also in for dental technicians this is a very nice uh, kit or package you see two speed light and one commander so you can put this commander in, in, your, in your camera in the hot shoe of your camera and you can control the, the duration of, of the flash with this commander so this is a very, very nice uh, kit and also very very cheap and you can apply this source of light in different uh, areas in dentistry from portraits to intraoral and also for laboratory these source of light are very very nice and very very versatile okay so we need to, to talk about the modifiers because modifiers is also very important and we we need to, to start uh, talking about about portrait okay for for portraits it's a very nice use uh, diaphragm between 8 and 11 I prefer the the 8 because with a 100 macro lens you obtain one centimeter of deep of field that is enough for focusing uh, the eyes and, and also the lips and for portrait the best modifier is this this is the beauty dish this is a beauty dish for use with a, a, a studio flash and beauty dish is like a standard for portrait okay but i don't like uh, studio lights because they are heavy are too powerful for one person so i really like speed light and this is a beauty dish for speed light this beauty dish is very 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 nice this is a metal uh, one and you only need a 16 inch beauty dish for one face and this is enough uh, this is an, uh, an option also beauty dish is a very interesting uh, light modifier you see the light is passed to the this uh, dish is this dish is uh, it's like a wok like a chinese wok with a hole and the light hits the disc and bounces the light for the first time and for the second time bounces in the in this dish and uh, produce this like a this is a light, like a tunnel like a tunnel of hard light who uh, this tunnel uh, make a glare a very nice glare in the hair and uh, in the mandibular uh, border and in the center you obtain a very soft light so this is perfect for a face uh, this is like a standard in photography all the portrait photographers use a beauty dish like a standard in, in the everyday work uh, you can use the, the, the beauty dish with a, without a, a diffuser or you can set a diffuser if you like a softer effect in the, in the skin so I really like the beauty dish also because you only need one only one light, only one flash for the illuminate a face and this is one of my, my, uh, my favorites this is a Opteca BD5 uh, beauty dish it's made uh, with a uh, plastic made so it's very 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 cheap and this also works with the speed light 
uh, I test this beauty dish with uh, and compare with the metal ones, uh, very uh, you know expensive beauty dish, uh, uh, and the effect is the same. So if you like uh, the metal, go for the metal. The metal is very nice, but also the plastic one is very 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 nice for portrait. You see, this is not a perfect beauty dish because it's a, a plastic one. This is a very cheap uh, device, but it works the same in the face. And also you can obtain this beauty, uh, you can run without a diffuser or with a diffuser if you like softer effect in the skin. So I have boots and I need to, to say that the effect is the same. How is the construct? How, how, how I can construct a, a small uh, studio in my in my clinic? So I need two speed light. I recommend two speed light. If you go for the Canon or Nikon, it's okay. If you going for the Jono, it's okay also. Uh, you need two lights, okay? One for the beauty dish, that this is the main light, and this is for the face. The beauty dish is going to, uh, to the face, in the middle of the face, at 45 degrees, okay? And this is the, your main light. Uh, you see the another one, the, the another flash, is going to the wall, and this is a white wall, because if you don't illuminate a wall, the wall, the white wall is going to gray. Okay, so this is a, in photography. The name of this flash is a, a background flash. So you need a, a illuminated background flash, and you need a, a for a, attach the speed light. You need this stands. This is a light stands. Okay. And you need two of these, one for the pack and one for the beauty dish. As you can see, the stands are very, very cheap, okay? And in, in front uh, or uh, connected uh, to the stand, you need a flash bracket for a speed light, okay? So this is the, the setup and you have two speed lights, but you need three lights, okay? So the main light is for the beauty with the speed light, the second light is for the back, and the third light is obtained for this reflector. This is a five-in-one reflector who bounds the main light of the, of the beauty dish. So you have three lights, with only two speed lights. So you need two stands, two light stands, two flashes, one, one uh, beauty dish, one five in one reflector, and two brackets for attach the speed light to the light stands. So look at this. Uh, this is the effect only with a one speed light, okay, with a beauty dish. Because the, the beauty dish is coming from uh, in the middle of the face, uh, like uh, 45 degrees, you, obtain, you obtain a lot of shadows, okay, here, here, and in the neck. So, you you need uh, the third light, who is coming from the 5-in-1 reflector, and this is the effect. So, the 5-in-1 reflector, use it in the silver side, bounce the, the main light, and fill these shadows. Okay? Doesn't, don't, don't eliminate the shadows, only fill the shadows, and obtain this uh, this uh, uh, this very 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 nice effect 
So the setting is the, the same for portraits. Diaphragm in 8 or 11, the shutter speed 125, the ISO 200, and you need to set the duration of your flash or your speed light. Depends of the, the distance between the face and the, and the in this case, the, the beauty dish, that the distance is, is like a two meters or three meters. And I always use this duration, one to 16 in my flashes. The same for the speed light uh, for the beauty dish and the same for the background speed light. Okay, so with this tab, you can elect or a black uh, background or white background. I prefer the white background because it's most, most, most versatile. If you like the black background, uh, it's quite difficult because you need more space between your patient and the black background. You need almost between two meters to three meters because if your beauty dish is here and the patient is very close to the background, you illuminate the background and it's going to gray. So you need to uh, you need a space between your patient and the background if you like the black. And also the background light is not not going to the to the background, uh, it's going to the hair. Okay? This is called in photography a uh, separation light. So you need to shoot like in this direction with a flash to the hair for separate the hair uh, to the uh, black background. If you don't have this light in the hair, uh, the hair, if you shoot a patient uh, with a black hair, the black hair is fused to the background. So this is a, uh, the name of this is a separation light. In the, in the white background it's more easy because between the back and the, and the your patient is you only need centimeters. Maybe uh, uh, 50 centimeters is enough. So you, you, you don't need more space. Okay. And this is another reason that I like the beauty dish because I only need one main light in the middle of the face, so the distribution of the light is more uh, repetitive. Uh, it's more repetitive than if I have two two lights uh, for studio flashes or two soft boxes, uh, each one in one side of your patient. So, uh, this is another advantage of, about uh, speed, uh, sorry, the beauty dish. Because the light is like this, it's very close to the patient. I can shoot a very nice uh, close-up without blocking the light. So, I shoot in regular, you know, for portrait mode, and I can approximate to my patient and shoot a very nice close up uh, uh, about the smile, uh, about the frontal uh, teeth, uh, without blocking the light because the light is coming from uh, above of, of your, my patient and the bounce light, the bounce light uh, is like this also. So I, I, it's, it's, uh, I, I can block the light and I, I shoot a very close to the patient. So that's, this is very nice for me. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, lips. For lips, uh, we start to enter inside the mount, and this is a kind of uh, macro photography. So for macro photography, I need to close my diaphragm and I go into F32. Okay, and also we, we need to talk about uh, diffusers. This is a, the very popular LumiQuest uh, pocket bouncers. Okay, this is the I'm sure that 
this is uh, the best, the most popular uh, with it, with it, between us in dentistry modifiers. But what happened with these uh, diffusers? This is a very, very, very uh, uh, these diffusers is a is there is no uh, uh, like this in photography. This is only for speed light, and you can divide the shadows and the light, as you can see in this in this uh, image. So these uh, uh, diffusers are very, very directional, very directional. So you can obtain a very high contrast, a natural contrast image with these diffusers. You see, you can choose the light side and the dark side with this diffuser. So are, these diffusers are very, very particular. For leaves, uh, I prefer to use like this. I, I have two speed light with uh, bouncers, and I can change the, the position of the, of the light and obtain a very nice uh, shadows. So uh, I set these flashes in in uh, with a speed uh, with a sorry with a light stands. If you don't like the stands, or maybe you don't have space, uh, the assistant can behold the flashes. And this, for me, this is the best for obtaining a very nice picture for lips. About settings, uh, this is the settings that I always use in macro. Diaphragm F32, the shutter speed 1 to 125, the ISO 200 or 100. And the flash duration also in 1 to 16. So, for example, in this, uh, in this picture, I only use one speed light in the opposite side of my lens because I need shadows. Okay? This is another picture, the same, the same settings, the same position of the light with bouncers. So, I really like bouncers for make uh, lips photography. What about the teeth? Also, we we are in macro mode, so for teeth, we need to understand that uh, this is the best uh, source of light. This is about macro uh, flash. This is macro flashes. Okay. The old flashes is called the ring flash. The ring flashes make this this shape of light the normal the uh, the uh, the actual actual flashes is not a ring flashes it's a macro flashes and actually macro flashes the modern life uh, macro flashes is a twin flash because you have two separate lights okay this is not like uh, the old ones that is uh, the light like this in a circle so we need to understand how to manage the ring flashes. As you can see, in the middle of this uh, area, you have a shadow, okay? But in this triangle, in this triangle of shadow, you obtain shadows only from the top of the flash on, uh, at the final uh, working ideal distance only 12 centimeters okay so if you use the the macro flash close very close to the object you obtain the ideal working distance if you shoot the ring flash more than 12 centimeters this is not the ideal working distance, so you can obtain only one light. If you set the flash like this, very close, you obtain two lights. Okay? If you uh, use like this in a 20, 20 centimeters or 20, uh, 30 centimeters, you, you, this is not the, 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 uh, the correct uh, uh, working distance to use uh, macro flashes. And that's why 
a lot of people doesn't like the, this type of flashes. So a lot of people buy a twin flashes because this problem. And there is another problem here that the most uh, common, most popular flash in dentistry uh, is about uh, twin flashes. And also the most popular lens in dent dentistry is about the 100 micro lens. And this is a common uh, issue because if I have a full frame camera sensor, uh, yes, I, I can use a 100 macro lens because in one to one I obtain my working distance is like a 12 or 11 centimeters, so I can use a macro flash. But if I have a cropped sensor camera, I mean a basic camera like like a Nikon uh, 3000 uh, uh, 3400 uh, or Canon T5 T6 or Nikon uh, 5000 or 7000 or Canon 5D or uh, 60D or 80D uh, this the the macro 100 lens is not the ideal uh, lens for for my work because uh, if you have a macro uh, flash the ideal lens is a 60 millimeters or maybe a 85 millimeters macro lenses because with this uh, focal lens I have a short a very short working distance so I can use this uh, type of flash okay so this is another problem look this is my my old flash this is my Nikon SB29 and if you see carefully the plastic of my flash the plastic is uh, translucent it's a cl plastic clear okay this is uh, the same in the Sigma flash the same, the same. Also, the, the Sigma is like a clone of these flashes. So, if I shoot with this type of flashes, these flashes produce a very hard light. So, I burn a lot of pixels. If I enlarge this uh, area, this uh, picture, I have this white area without any information. Because, because all these pixels is burned, so I, I don't have anything information, any kind of information, any color, any texture here. So this is very very important in dentistry. This also, this is with a hard macro flash, and you see you have a lot of area uh, burned spots area, and you see the difference the same patient with a soft light and this also. So this is a very important because in dentistry we always need to uh, soften the light for perceived pixels because pixels uh, have information about color, uh, form and texture. So we need to understand this. When you uh, have a softer light you have a lot of information, okay? If you use a, a hard light with a plastic, a clear plastic in front of uh, flashes, you burn a lot of information. Like these pictures. You see, you have more uh, uh, information here because the, the light is softer, okay? And in, in dentistry, we always work with a very reflector surface from enamel, metals, uh, blood, saliva. So we always need a soft flashes. For example, this is the Canon, the Canon ring flash or macro ring light. And these have 
a white plastic pack in front of the flash. So this is a kind of soft light, softer than my Nikon SB29, softer than my uh, Metz flash or uh, Sigma flash, macro flash. So this is better for, for the dentistry. The problem is uh, the price. This is this uh, this flash is a expensive flash, okay? Uh, this is the Jono flash. This is a, a kind of a clone of uh, Canon flashes, and this also have a plastic white opaque. And but this is a kind uh, softer than than the Canon flashes because it's bigger, and in photography bigger is softer. And the price is okay, it's very nice. Also, you can, I can shoot with Canon cameras and also with Nikon cameras with this flash. This only, when, when you search this flash, you only found four Canon cameras, but also you can shoot with Canon, with Na Nikon cameras, sorry, with Nikon cameras in manual mode. In Canon cameras, you, you can shoot in ETTL function that this, uh, this is uh, like an auto-regulation flash. And look, this is an a image with uh, this flash. Okay, so I obtained this image with a full-frame camera with my 100 macro lens in a closer position. So between the flash and the object is only 12 centimeters. So I have two lights and because this, la this flash is a very soft light, I have a lot of details, as you can see. So for me, uh, macro flashes are the best in dentistry, in clinical dentistry, because in clinical dentistry, I don't have time for put uh, special soft boxes or whatever type of flashes. So, because I don't have time, okay? If you have a 60 millimeters macro lenses, maybe it's better because you have uh, less working distance and you can uh, manage better the, the, this A and B light from your macro flash. This is the same patient with, with a contrastor and I have a lot of information here. If I work with a totally, absolutely uh, isolation, it's better because the isolation have a matte surface and uh, it works like a bouncer, you see. So in dentistry, in clinical dentistry, you need to select uh, the ideal uh, a macro flash. For me, the best is the Jono, definitely, because it's the, it's the softer light uh, for this purpose. And also, in clinical dentistry, I don't have time for use special uh, flashes or devices in, in my everyday work. Okay? So, look, this is a picture, take it with a mirror, with my Nikon uh, 3400 uh, camera. This is a basic, very basic model and also with a 100 micro lens in one to one. So my macro lens in, in my, and also with uh, my, uh, my macro flash is very close to, to, to the mirror. So I, I show the, this is the, the, the same image, okay, and I can enlarge this image, you, as you, you can see, this is the same image, enlarging, enlarging, okay, and, and I have a lot of details because when I preserve pixels, I can enlarge digitally the image because I uh, don't have uh, burned pixels. So this image is almost very difficult to obtain with a microscope. But you can obtain with a soft uh, macro flash. So, in dentistry, uh, in everyday clinical photography, 
Uh, you don't need a, a twin flash. Uh, these flashes is uh, also very nice uh, devices, but I really like the the the, the macro flash. Okay. Uh, you have some uh, advantage with these uh, devices, like uh, like this, for example, you can set uh, nice diffusers, and also with this Canon, but you need uh, special equipment, special diffusers, and to adapt to these flashes. And I I recommend uh, if if I need a uh, tool uh, light like this. Uh, twin setup, I prefer use uh, two speed light with bouncers. Okay, this is not a uh, everyday photography, but if you need uh, ta to take very nice pictures like this, uh, this is my my choose. If I need details for texture or for going more inside. Uh, uh, I only use a speed light and bouncer, for example, like this. Uh, in this, uh, in this picture, I only use a speed light with a bouncer in the opposite side of my lens. So I obtain, I can choose the direction of the light, and I obtain different type of shadows and different type of uh, effects. Maybe for communicate or for uh, make a very nice uh, pictures like this. So you can change the position of the light to obtain different effects only with uh, one light because uh, natural teeth are translucent elements. So in 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 the uh, maybe in 800 percent of the, uh, the cases we only need one light. Okay. In this picture, for example, in the in the left one, I only have one light in the opposite side of my lens. In the right uh, image, I only use also one light uh, in the opposite side of my lens. So uh, when I need to make this uh, special or picture with a lot of details. I prefer the, to use a speed light for gingiva because uh, there is a lot of uh, surgeons, surgeons, and also uh, perio, perio, uh, uh, so, uh, people who made uh, or need a very very soft light. So if you need the softer light, uh, you need to. Experiment with this uh, diffuser. This is a LumiQuest Ultra Soft diffuser. This is very similar to Bouncer, but uh, with this uh, diffuser, you bounce and diffuse the light, so the light is softer. This is not a directional diffuser, but this is the softer in the market. You see the plastic. The plastic doesn't have uh, any reflection, so this also happens in in the in the mouth so this is the best diffuser for gingiva and also for metals you see uh, this is a picture with a hard light if you see carefully in the gingiva you have a lot of burned pixels so you lose a lot of details when you use a, a softer light like this you see the gingiva is like a plastic because the light is softer. So if you are perio, a perio, a perio dentist, uh, maybe this is the, your best diffuser. You see, uh, at more magnification, uh, the gingiva doesn't have reflection. So for me, uh, always in, in, when I need to, to shoot gingiva, I always use uh, one only one flash with this uh, ultra soft so i can eliminate all the, the reflection and i see more more like this picture this picture is not possible with another type of light 
So, ultra soft is the best for gingiva and also for metals. If you are a surgeon, uh, you need maybe a uh, very nice setup is a camera with a 100 macro lens and a speed light with a ultra soft because in 800% of uh, the cases you need only one light okay the same look this is a very old picture with a low resolution camera so in photography the light is the most important uh, element so if you can modify the light with diffuser with different type of diffuser you obtain a different options and different uh, image also the same look this is the effect of the ultra soft so this is my choose my election for ultra soft pictures I always use the, the LumiQuest ultra soft if I need a very nice picture about lips and, and, and natural teeth, I always use the bouncer. For portrait, I always use the beauty dish. So, because the light is the most important uh, thing in, in photography. So, um, I I, I need to say thank you to the uh, organization of this uh, congress and, and I really uh, I'm very happy to, to, to participate in this type of congress because uh, you know the, the knowledge uh, I always uh, know that the knowledge it, it can be open and free for everyone who search and this is uh, this is uh, Carlos Ayala and thank you for your time and if uh, you need to contact me and uh, you need to please write me by Facebook and you have my my email or uh, Instagram and I'm really glad to very uh, glad to to, uh, to share my, my experience if you need and thank you for your time and uh, see in other in another uh, time maybe and goodbye and and thank you